Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we did the basic setup of our, our local database um, class that we were implementing. We set a local storage and array, as well as three functions to write, find by an ID, find by an email. Um, we wired that uh, database uh, class into the user model, and we did a quick test in Postman to see um, if it's all wired up correctly. And so um, having wired that up correctly, we can now get uh, started by implementing the functionality for our methods on our class. Uh, let's get started by removing that console log from the previous lesson, and let's get started by writing our functionality for this write function. So the first thing I want to do is a conditional check here, and if we, I wanted to make sure that we actually have data that's being passed in. So we can just do a simple conditional check to see if uh, data is true. Uh, if it is not, uh, then we want to return false. All right, and that'll just indicate to um, whichever line of code or whoever is invoking this function, if that does return false, uh, that means something went wrong. So that's straightforward. And now in the, the truthy condition, so if uh, data is passed through, what we want to do is reference this local storage array. And then we want to just do a simple push. We'll push this data into the array. Step here, we want to return back to whoever or whichever line of code is invoking this function. And so basically what I'm doing here is everything went well. We'll just return the data back and that gives us a truthy value. Uh, value. Um, if something went wrong, i.e. there is no data being passed, it'll return false. Um, and then what this does is in the actual user model uh, where we call this db.write, we can actually do some or write some logic that is going to tell us or we can do some error handling here to see if our write to the database went okay. So I'll just switch on over back to our, our db.js file um, and let's uh, just carry on implementing the rest of these methods here. And in a, a similar kind of uh, pattern, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. For this find one method, we're gonna do a conditional on the ID uh, just to check if an ID is indeed passed through. If it is uh, not passed through, then we will return false uh, following this the pattern that I described earlier. The purpose of this function is to look into that storage array and find an object in that array that is going to match the, the ID that we are searching for. So what we'll do is set up a simple for loop and we're going to uh, create this local variable for the loop um, called record. We'll say let record of this local storage. And then, so in this for loop, we'll get, um, in each iteration, we'll get a reference to each item in that array. And then we'll do a simple check, um, a conditional here, and we'll say if record.id is triple equal to the ID that we, we're actually searching for, then we'll return this specific iteration of this record. Cool. So pretty straightforward. Um, that's just going to help us uh, find a specific object by ID. All right, and lastly, we will implement this find by email function. And for this last one, we're going to do something slightly different. And so I'm going, what I'm going to do is we'll set up our conditional check here for email. And we're going to do something slightly differently here. Above the, the conditional check, let's just set a, a local scope variable here called user. And we'll just assign this to a default value of false. And then the idea here is we're going to set this value to false, saying that we actually don't have a user until we loop through everything. And we'll say let record of this dot local storage like we did above. And we'll loop through that local storage array. And we'll do a conditional and we'll say if record dot email is equal to the email that is being passed through. And we'll assign the value of a user to record. And so if there is a positive match here, then user will have a value. And then once we break out of this for loop, we can simply return user. And then in this case, we will have successfully um, either, or if, it was, if the search was successful, we'll have a value for user, we will return that. Otherwise, it'll just return that uh, default value of false that we set here. So just a slightly different pattern. So now that we have these methods implemented, we can then start using them and we can finally start moving on to the important part of this course, which is actually implementing the local passport strategy. So we've got all the moving parts that we need to do that. And so I'll see you on over in the next one where we'll get started on that. Um, so cheers for now and I'll see you in the next one.